Hi guys, it's Professor Fernandez here and I have a special guest. We're gonna talk about house made of sugar here. Will the special guest please introduce herself? Hi guys, my name is Professor Roper. I teach English 1301 and 1302. Yeah, she teaches at? Lone Star Kingwood. Hey, so we are gonna talk about house made of sugar because we both love, love that story. Yeah. Love that story. You taught it in your 1302, correct? Yes. And I'm teaching it in my 1302. So we're just going to like kind of gush over this story. So okay. let's start with you. What are some of the big things that you kind of naturally gravitated to in this story? So I'm a huge fan of magic realism. I could do magic realism all day, every day and be perfectly happy if that was all I ever read for the rest of my life. Uh, I really the thing that I try to stress to my students about it is the character development how the characters are revealed to us mm -hmm. because we get little bits and pieces about the narrator we get little bits and pieces about Christina and sometimes they match up and sometimes they don't at all and so it's interesting to kind of see how those fit right so like yeah. the idea of like the narrators and how we see them through the whole piece because we we see this entire thing going through the eyes of the narrator who's not named. Right. In my head, his name is Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> it has that always works. been Daniel. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I have a story behind that because the first time I taught it, um, the first class I taught it to, um, one of the students did a piece on it and his name was Daniel. So it's just been in my head. I've just called him Daniel. Okay. So if I say Daniel, it's not because that's... It's just the narrator. It's just why I call. <laughs> so Daniel um, is there and he, we're seeing everything through him and what we are assuming is that everything's okay. Right. Is that, is that okay to assume that everything's okay with this narrator, you think? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not, because he's describing Christina's actions, and then he's kind of, you're, you're implying his, or sorry, inferring his own actions from what Christina's doing, and it's like, what is wrong with this guy? So, okay, she's doing crazy stuff, she leaves her hat on the bed, but he's moving the mailbox because he's paranoid about her checking the mail? Not a normal action. Right, and I think it's just one of those things that when he says it, he's or when it's written it's written in a way that's just like oh this is just a normal thing I'm just gonna right I'm just gonna right. like go around this corner and like check up on my wife right. <laughs> while she's answering the door and listen to this whole conversation right. like oh this is a normal thing for me to do everybody does that everybody does that that's what marriage is <laughs> um, and I think I mean there's a lot um, the thing of the uh, the idea of Daniel or the uh, or the narrator is that we kind of understand his suspicion mm -hmm. because he's he has this lie that's kind of right. hanging over and right. so then it's almost like in the in the mind of the reader that like the question is how is he going to keep this lie going right and so we almost excuse him for stuff like being creepy around corners yeah a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so then what do we know about or what do you think think we know about the unreliable narrator now after after we've read it what do we what do we know now that you think we wouldn't have known had we started it when we started it so he's very much projecting a lot of his paranoia onto Christina Christina is superstitious or maybe mentally ill not sure but he's definitely projecting his own fear onto her in very subtle ways but in ways that make him super creepy uh, following her to the bridge, pretty creepy. Going to the piano teacher's, sorry, voice teacher's house, really, really creepy. But it's kind of couched in between Christina's crazy, I'm kind of okay, Christina's crazy. So you're like, okay, he's all right. He's cool, it's cool, it's whatever. And then you see him at the end and he's chasing her down the street and you're like, what just happened? I don't know where, what? So, I mean, he doesn't end it on, everything's okay now. He ends it on, oops, gotta go, okay, bye. Yes. Yeah. Because then, you know, spoiler alert, if you haven't read it, then, you know, we're about to spoil it. But, you know, she ends up chunking deuce, right? Yeah. She ends up leaving. And so she ends up leaving in the hands of another lover. 
And then, like, I don't know, when I read it, I was just like, well, of course she did, dude. Of course she right. did. Right. She you did. suck. You, because you suck. Yeah. But then he leads us to, he leads us to believe that, like, it's not longer Christine, it's now Violeta. Right. But was, was it? Yeah. Is he really it? jilted? Is it? You know how it is with boyfriends and girlfriends and they split up and you're only getting one side of the story and you're kind of right. having to see what you're have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I wish, I kind of almost wish Silvano Ocampo would have written or somebody would write, maybe us, uh, would write like the other side, like the Christina Done. side. Done? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to do that. Um, just write the Christina side because I would love to have her like, and my husband lied to me about <laughs> this house made of sugar, but right. like I'm trying to make, I'm trying to let him make it because I've been difficult, but like, yeah. look at me in my pretty dress. Right, right. And that's one of the other things that we talk about in my class is what's normal here? Mm -hmm. What can you expect a sane, rational person to do? And what is out of the realm of like, you've crossed the line into you probably need some help. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, Puppy, saving a puppy, probably okay. Makes people happy. Getting a dress, cool. Makes people happy. Uh, meeting up with random people that you're not real sure of, kind of creepy, you know? Mm -hmm. Taking on someone else's name, not normal. Out of nowhere, at least. I mean, if you want to change your name, that's fine. But out of nowhere, not, yeah. not okay. Definitely not okay. Yeah. I, I think um, one thing that I is boggling, not boggling, but one thing that is sometimes difficult or that people can gloss over when they read it. Cause I read, I don't know how many times you read this, but I read, I have read this so many times and, every like time, and you find something new every single time, right? Yeah. So like the symbolism in this is it's crazy. Insane. It's insane. It's just yeah. insane. So I usually focus on like the dresses and the dog mm -hmm. and the house. Right. So like really, but there's so many other little things that I keep going mm -hmm. on. But yeah. the idea of that ha of that dog, yeah. Oh man, poor dog. Bruto. Yeah. Love. And I just love, need to essentially to park every Sunday so I can see him. She's like, "All right, that's cool. I can that's, do that. Yeah, I can do this because that's that's normal. That totally, absolutely totally. normal." <laughs> oh no. So one of the things, it's almost like Inception here, where it's just like, you have like, like a story inside of a story, inside of a story, right. inside of a story. Right. And so the only thing you can count on is what's in front of you in the, on the page. Right. So what do you think the inside story is? What's like the core, the, the, the thread of, we might be able to trust this? That everything's a lie. <laughs> that it's, Everyone's unreliable at the end. Everyone's unreliable. Well, you know, it starts off with a lie. Even though, like, you understand the lie. Right. Like, you have to, I think, as a reader, balance, balance between lie and understanding. Right. And how much that understanding is going to color your, your um, acceptance of yeah. what you are going to swallow as the truth. Right. 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 And so, like, everything's a lie. I trust nothing and I trust nobody. But that's just regular me. That's just a normal Tuesday. Um, <laughs> and so, um, so, yeah, it's just everything's a lie. So that means nothing can be trusted in this story. But then, like you were saying, what is usually normal for people? Right. And right. so can you trust what you think is normal? Right. Versus what they think is normal? I mean, I have friends who think things that are normal that I'm just like oh no oh no child mm -hmm. um but I mean is this their normal or so cool I just don't think it is right yeah right and I think it's like I don't know I just I just <laughs> let's talk about Violetta for a second yeah who the heck is this woman because this oh, woman so bad for her Yes, I feel like she had a tragic life. Yeah. And I feel that, like, she, she definitely looms large in the story. Mm hmm Right? And, like, all we know about her is what we are told from people who knew her. Right. And it's like she doesn't really have any agency. 
Mm-hmm. Much like Christina doesn't have any agency right. either. So, right. I mean, we have to get into the like the feminism part of this because hello, two feminists. But um, <laughs> but like, it's interesting that the women in the story don't have any agency, but right. yet by the end they kind of do because they both kind of leave. Mm-hmm. Is that weird to think? Am I getting that right? I didn't notice that they do. They both do. No, that's accurate. Wow. This is so, there's so many layers to this story. And there's only one life that can be transferred between the two of them. They don't get their own life. It's either one person has it or the other person has it. Right. Which, oh, I feel so bad for Violetta. I really do. I really do. And I really feel, I mean, I, okay, first of all, is Violetta dead? She is dead, right? She's dead. Mm -hmm. She's dead. She's good and dead. Okay. Right. when, When the narrator comes to the voice teacher trying to get out information, she says, oh, you know, we can't say all nice things about the dead. And he said, oh, so you're trying to console me. And she's like, yeah, okay. So she's dead, for sure dead. She's dead. Now, the question is, how long has this girl been dead, though? See, I had to kind of, in my head, she's been dead for a few years. Right. I don't know what that is in the story, but that's just kind of the assumption that I made. Right, me too. I thought that she was dead maybe not like recent dead not like a year right. or two right. but like maybe five years like yeah it's, it's been lingering but right. it's not like 20 years ago right enough that other guys have come to talk to this woman about her mm-hmm. like he's not the first that's shown up to her house and that she's had to be like it's okay right because other other suitors other lovers have come to do that but it if she's still doing this it has to be somewhat recent right Right. It has to be. And she had to have been a larger than life person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something, and maybe, maybe what is left in the house made of sugar isn't so much like a ghost of her. Maybe ghosts are made out of memories. Mm. And maybe that's what like Ocampo is trying to say here. Yeah. Is that, you know, there are some personalities that loom so large. Right. That no lie and no truth could make them they make themselves right and so people naturally gravitate to them whether it be in life or in death death Mm -hmm. um maybe that's something that she's trying to play with here Mm -hmm. um that uh you know there is there is love and lies after death (laughs) maybe that's what she's trying to say i'd I'd buy it you'd buy it i'd buy that (laughs) Um, one of the things that I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, what, what were you talking about? <laughs> I was getting I was getting deep with the. You were waxing of, philosophical. I was. I was. I was. I was definitely channeling oh, my inner um, inner reader. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you, because you talk about mental illness versus superstition. Yeah. What do you think about her being in an institution? Violetta being yeah. in, a, in an institution. That is, you know, when I read it the first bazillion times I was just like I was just like oh well she's obviously was a crazy woman but then I'm wondering because we have the unreliable narrator and right. because we're seeing everything through his eyes right um that and we don't this larger than life person and then, this larger than life person we don't know yeah if like she's even true right she's even real right so this it could all be in daniel's head and daniel could be the one in the institution yeah Ooh, i hadn't thought of that right and so it's just like so that's why i thought men- either this is about mental illness or superstition i like that um because yeah. you know if you start off with superstition not that one precedes the other because it doesn't right but if you start off with superstition it it's almost a slippery slope to mm-hmm. thinking other things right right just like the idea of they're lying, but I understand the lie, right. but I understand the superstition. So I'm able to swallow this, which means I'm able to swallow this and believe this and believe this. And the next thing you know, right. and now it's a delusion. Right. Yeah. And that delusion is, oh, this is all in the mind of an unreliable narrator who yep. is probably himself. You'll let that, you know, you don't know, right. you know, well, and he uses a lot of the same, I don't want to put this. The way that he describes himself and describes Violetta, I think he thinks they're very different. But when you actually read the descriptions themselves, they sound very similar. Oh, okay. I didn't even know about that. Tell me more about that. It's just a matter of degrees. 
yes. he's saying, oh, Violetta does this, right? The thing that he says right before I move the mailbox is Violetta leaves her head on the bed and nobody does that. Of course not, right? Who would do that? Why? <laughs> but I moved the mailbox to the end of the street up in front of my house so that she can't get the mail, which she does anyway. anyway. It's, it's got delivered. Um, so, I mean, he's trying to say, oh, look, I'm reasonable. And it's right in the middle of, she's not reasonable, but it sounds exactly the same. You have to start mm -hmm. out with trusting him to kind of go, okay, I guess that's okay because he's saying it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And that's what I think what's so lovely about this story is that you could... And why I teach it last <laughs> is that you can go so many directions here. Mm -hmm. um, makes it great for a research paper, hint, hint. <laughs> and and makes it, it really does. Like, I'm just because mm -hmm. there's really, you are only bound by what's in the story. And right. even the story is giving you a lot of room. Mm -hmm. A lot of room to yeah. interpret. Um, and a lot of room to argue yeah like about it too yeah you could pretty much say anything about daniel and you're right right i yeah. love that you call him daniel you just have to back it up right right yeah i'm actually reading um essays right now in their character development how is the character revealed either from the author or how are the character how is christina revealed through the narrator mm -hmm. uh, and they're all really good because they are able to see kind of the roots stretching out from the beyond the bounds of the story mm -hmm. and try to pick those up and pull them in, mm -hmm. right? Like, well, we can make this assumption about Christina probably because this thing happened, right? Because she hangs on to this dress that she wore when she first met the narrator, mm -hmm. she probably doesn't buy herself a whole lot of stuff. Right. Right. Everything has sentimental value. She's one of those girlfriend that, girlfriends that keeps all of the trinkets from ex-boyfriends right yeah um so they're going oh yeah she does that i know she does that because she does this other crazy thing um so if she's keeping trinkets from ex-boyfriends how much of a stretch is it to bring a dog into the picture not not at all not at all and yeah the dog the dog we got to talk about the dog the oh, name the of dog. the dog okay Ruto. so she calls him love but his name is ruto so it translates to stupid love way to go I just have to put that out there because students miss that all the time. I'm just like, she's literally telling you this is about stupid love. Like, yeah, yeah. Symbolism is amazing. <laughs> Look up things you don't know, guys. Yes. So is there anything you think we're missing in our conversation? Huh. We talked about symbolism. Your, your students have already kind of talked about mental illness versus superstition, right? Mm-hmm. I want to throw something interesting about superstition. I don't know if you are aware of this, but researchers actually did a study trying to see if pigeons were superstitious. They fed pigeons at random times throughout the day. And the pigeons, when they got hungry, would start to do the things they were doing the last time they got fed. Like maybe this is the action that leads to me getting fed. And that's superstition. Yeah. If I ace this test and I'm wearing these socks, these are now my lucky socks. Right. So we're not the only animals that have superstitions. This is a human thing. And I think a lot of us are an animal thing, I guess. And I think a lot of us view superstitions as very old school, as maybe something our grandparents believed in, like, you know, angels and demons and that sort of thing, um, as something that maybe is a little bit of an outdated relic of the church. But this story doesn't presuppose that. Mm -hmm. It presupposes that superstitions are a thing that we currently hold. Right. And so I think it's interesting that Christina doesn't seem out of date. Good point. She doesn't. And it's just because I don't think superstitions are ever going to be out of date. Mm. I think we can logic them to death or close to <laughs> death, right? Yeah. I think, oh, you know, just because I wore my lucky socks. Yeah. That one day I got an A doesn't necessarily mean that if I wear those socks again, I'm going to get an A again. Yes, it does. You can lo it does, by the <laughs> way, but clean them. Um, it doesn't mean that because we'll logic it, logic, logic through it, but there's always going to be, and maybe this is also what Ocampo is going to say, there's always going to be an element of magic mm -hmm. in life that we can't explain. Right. And in that, in that area of magic is that idea of superstition. Yeah. 
and to some things you're just not going to be able to explain. Right. Just like you can't explain the unreliable narrator in this story. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think in order to have that sort of magic realism, you have to have someone in the story who's at least a little bit open to the possibility of something else. Right. right? Another layer of the world, if you will. A suspension of disbelief. Right. Otherwise, it just comes from out of nowhere and it seems clunky and deus ex machina-esque. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure that's a reference they're going to get, but like Google, no. it, it's good. Like you're throwing it in to save the day. Boom. This is horrible writing, but I'm going to say it's magic realism. <laughs> Pretty much every dystopian movie made for and, a book. Yeah. 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 All right. Is there cool. anything? I think we got everything. I think that's it. Yay! I'm going to hit yeah. stop record. Guys, go ahead and finish up the module, and I hope that you enjoyed this. Say goodbye! Bye, guys!